Darina, right now the level of radiation is around you. It's much higher than in Chernobyl. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your guide, Elena, and I welcome you on flight over the Atlantic Ocean. We are flying with you from Frankfurt to Atlanta right now. We are almost almost in the middle of the flight. The speed is, the speed is 800 kilometers per hour and we are 11,000 meters above the sea level. In this video I'd like to show you how much of radiation you have on board of the flight. And I took this with me, the Geiger counter uh, that worked well with me in the Chernobyl exclusion zone in the days when I've been working there as a tour guide, guiding people in the exclusion zone before the war, before the Russian full-scale invasion into Ukraine. That is the Geiger counter and it shows you the numbers, it shows you the level of radiation at each step of your trip. And with the help of this device we were uh, measuring the level of radiation on every step of our trip. So it's turned off because when I turn it on you will see high numbers and you will hear a sound of high radiation. Let's, let's try it. You hear the sound? It's, it's already it's already the sound of alarm. So what I do right now, I will change the limit of the Geiger counter as a sanitary level because in fact uh, it's 0 0.3 right now, the sanitary level. This is what is supposed to be normal, natural level of radiation uh, on the ground. But as we are not on the ground, we are on the flight, the level will be higher. So what I did, I increased, increased the level of radiation, the sanitary limit for 2.30 microsieverts per hour. And uh, now, now we're still scared people. Sorry, so we have to make it even higher. I will make 3.3. Okay, you know I'm losing my skills. It's been for a while since I've been to the Chernobyl zone as a tour guide. Okay, so we put a 3.3. So the level of radiation right now we'll see. Uh, so if it reaches 3.3, yeah, the, the, the sound will turn on turn on but you know I made sure that the cabin crew is not crept uh, by the sound so I made the central level much higher so right now guys it's almost three full microsieverts per hour the normal level of radiation on the ground would be 0 0.1 0 0.2 well 0 0.3 that is the maximum that you have if you have higher this means there is something not okay around you and it's radioactive. For example, this is your child who comes to help you with. Okay, so here I have like a cognitive <laughs> conflict because my child is not supposed to be next to me when the level of radiation is this high. Looks like Darina doesn't like this level of radiation. You know, when I been working as a tour guide in Chernobyl, my husband was saying, I know why you have chosen this kind of work. This is because children under 18 years old are not allowed to go to work with you. They are not allowed to go to Chernobyl. Basically because of radiation. Right now we have 3.0. 07 microsieverts per hour, well, more than three full microsieverts per hour. Uh, I have to tell you that when you come with a tour guide to the exclusion zone, you follow the exact routes where uh, this level of radiation is even rare. So the normal uh, level of radiation on your way will be about one full microsievert, one point something. Okay, so the sanitary level is 0 0.3. So in your normal environment where you are from day to day, you have less than 0 0.3. In the Chernobyl exclusion zone, on the touristic ways, you've got about 1 point something microsieverts. 
uh, but there are also some hot spots all over the places where the level is higher and uh, these are mostly burial sites but in general you know it will be about one point something microsieverts per hour which means right now guys we have the level of radiation higher than normally you have on the trip to Chernobyl excursion so yes there are hot spots where the level is higher uh, and you like how it works the closer you are to the hot spot basically to this tiny dust that uh, emits radiation the higher is the level and sometimes it can be like 100 microsieverts i've measured i think 400 microsieverts next to the ferris wheel uh, they used to be this kind of hotspot. Yeah, but when you measure it, you spend there for you know few seconds, and then you take your arm away, and this radiation, gamma radiation, we are measuring gamma rays, is not catching you anymore. Darina, right now the level of radiation is around you. It's much higher than in Chernobyl. Oh wow, says Darina, and nobody is telling you don't fly because you will be over radiated that everybody is telling you don't go to Chernobyl because there is lots of radiation basically there is a lot of radiation uh, the nature of radiation on board of the airplane and in the Chernobyl exclusion zone is different but the sound is the same <laughs> because on board of the plane uh, the gamma waves they go through your body and you cannot inhale or ingest any source of radiation it just goes through you and then you go when you go back to the ground the level of radiation goes down and you forget about it in Chernobyl um, the source of radiation is in the tiny tiny dust that is right now mostly settled in the soil so like you, if you behave well, if you listen to the guide, if you are legally in the Chernobyl exclusion zone and I hope very soon after the war those legal tours uh, will be restarted, uh, the very simple rules is just not to eat the soil, not to you know, pick up the local apples and mushrooms, especially if they are glowing, not to uh, ingest it and uh, you'll be okay follow the route, follow your guide and your guide is not supposed to take you to the places where the level of radiation is too high it should not be higher than on board of the airplane and uh, it basically should be less yes uh, and uh, you'll be okay dust raising works are forbidden in the exclusion zone and uh, you should not ingest or inhale anything so just imagine that everything around you is potentially contaminated. You prefer not to touch anything. Yes, and uh, you leave the zone without troubles. On the way out of the zone, you uh, pass through the contamination control twice. There are like special frames that check you uh, to make sure that you did not pick up any radioactive dust on your shoes, on your clothes. Uh, to make sure you are clean and if you are clean, you leave the zone uh, I can't say forever, because for sure you will want to come back. Um, I want to come back like very much, because I loved my work in the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. Um, I basically missed the sound of radiation. For me it sounds like music, because, well, this level of radiation is pretty safe for your health, so it doesn't scare you much, if you understand that it's safe, of course. Uh, for the whole day in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, you receive the dose of radiation that is equal to one hour of a flight. By the way, why do we have so much of radiation on the flight? Do you have any ideas? Uh, yep, you are right. The level of radiation is uh, higher on the plane. You know, the higher you go, the closer you are to the sun and to the space. And here, the atmosphere, the layer of atmosphere is not protecting you from space radiation anymore so this is why here on board of the airplane you are exposed to radiation the most radioactive flight is between Canada and Japan it goes in the north and there you are very much exposed to radiation basically this is the highest this is my first flight over the Atlantic Ocean 
um, and I have 3.5 microsieverts per hour and this is the highest that I've experienced myself. I've been flying with the Geiger counter before to Egypt and to Thailand and there the uh, level was maximum like about 2 microsieverts per hour. Here, here we have higher and I was told about this by the other tour guides but now I just checked it myself and uh, yeah it's really much higher 3.6 uh, so basically uh, one hour of this flight can be equal to even two days in the Chernobyl exclusion zone depends on how you know careful you are I mean how much time you spend uh, trying to find and measure the hotspots you know the more you are measuring hotspots where the level is higher, you know, the bigger dose of radiation your Geiger counter absorbs in the tour. Well, this was about radiation on board of the airplane and the Chernobyl exclusion zone in the perfect world without Russian full-scale invasion into Ukraine. The thing is that Russians went towards Kiev through the Chernobyl exclusion zone they used uh, the roads, they just get inside from Belarusian territory, enter the exclusion zone, and then from over there, those long uh, kilometers of tanks and heavy machinery was moving towards the capital of Ukraine, towards Kiev. Right now, the zone is very much protected. You know, luckily, people like my husband, they, they our armed forces they defended Kiev they protected Kiev Kiev didn't fall uh, and Russians ran away those of them who, who could uh, but now the exclusion zone is super protected I suppose it is super mined right now from the Ukrainian side uh, and um, I cannot really give you any forecast about tourism in the exclusion zone will it be renewed one day or not nobody knows we do not know it really depends on situation in the country uh, it depends a lot on situation in Belarus and Russia are they will they remain terrorist states or the regime will be different I don't know Russia collapses Lukashenko uh, be det detained and prosecuted we'll see so Depending on this, the authorities of Ukraine will decide should they, should we reopen the exclusion zone for tourism or it will stay like super uh, protected and super closed territory, not because of radiation, but because of high risk of invasion from Belarus and Russia through the exclusion zone. I hope it will not be the case because the place is really very much interesting. Uh, it used to be the place of probably the biggest tragedy in Ukrainian history and the recent Ukrainian history But now of course we have we have much much more of tragedies over there the war uh, Pripyat was the ghost town where 50,000 of people used to live and then they left in one day because because of the explosion on the reactor number four but now we have more ghost towns which are bombarded and uh, where people were killed. But it's different. It's different. Chernobyl, my, uh, my impression, Chernobyl of today was the place that gave us hope. Yes, it was the place of the worst nuclear disaster in human history, but at the same time it was the place where nature took it back. No, where nature received a chance and in 36 years it started you know, to take it back and it showed that nature is much much more uh, is much stronger than we thought about it than we supposed and as a result the contaminated place was free from people uh, but it was full of beautiful nature, of wildlife, of animals, of, I don't know, trees, flowers and butterflies. 
and to see how nature recovered, how beautiful it is without people, the planet without people, it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I love people, I really love people, I love it when people are different, of different colors and characters and nationalities and everything, and I love tourists, but uh, as well I love this place without people. You know, uh, I'm not afraid of the end of the, of the world, in fact, because of Chernobyl, because I already saw it, I saw it in Chernobyl, and it's beautiful. It just has no people, but it has life in it. It's not dead, it's life. It's full of life, it's full of nature. You know, when we say we should take care about the planet, we lie to ourselves, because we should take care about us. Nature without people will be okay. We can see it from Chernobyl. But we people, we wouldn't be okay if we keep polluting the planet, keep spoiling environment and keep launching the full scale invasion and behave like terrorists and starting the war, nonsense war, instead of developing science, culture and investing into education for a better life. Okay, I'm so philosophical. This was a brief video from your guide Elena about radiation on board of the airplane. Okay, 3.5 microsieverts per hour and 0 0.1, 0 0.2 when you go back to the ground.